Hi, I'm Luke, and recently I've been playing a lot of Minesweeper. And I know I'm about 30 years late to the party, but actually it's a really fun game. It's one of those puzzle games with just a few simple rules that's easy just to keep playing and playing. Now the thing is, the more I've been playing and the better I've got at it, the more I'm just sort of playing on autopilot. I'm not even sure I actually enjoy the game anymore. I think my brain just likes the patterns. So I thought, if it's all just about satisfying that part of my brain, why do I even need to be the one solving the Minesweeper? Why don't I make something that can just do the work for me? To make my idea come to life, I first coded a fully functional, playable version of Minesweeper in Python. This had all the features you'd expect, including revealing all the bombs when you accidentally clicked one, which I made use of more than once. So, the next key question is, how do you solve Minesweeper? If you're unfamiliar with the rules of the game, essentially you have a grid of tiles. Beneath some of these tiles are bombs, and you don't want to click on these bombs. When you reveal a tile that doesn't have a bomb on it, it will contain a number. And what this number will tell you is how many bombs there are in the surrounding eight tiles. In this case, we know that there is just one bomb in one of these eight tiles, but that information on its own isn't enough for us to do anything other than make a good guess. What you want to do to start with is reveal a small group of clear tiles. In this case, we can use the fact that surrounding this number one, there is only a single tile that hasn't already been revealed, so we know it must be a bomb. We can then place a flag on this tile to indicate that we know there is a bomb beneath. We can use similar reasoning with this number two tile to say that both of these tiles that are not yet revealed must have bombs beneath them. Now, if we look at this second number one, we know from the position of our flag exactly where the bomb is. So we know the remaining three tiles surrounding that number one that haven't been revealed must all be clear, so we can go ahead and reveal them. We repeat this logic again and again, and we slowly start to reveal more and more tiles. Now this logic is fairly simple to program into an auto solver, which is exactly what you're seeing here. And I have to say, this is already looking pretty satisfying. However, currently the solver quite often gets stuck. And when it does get stuck at the moment, it just picks a random tile and guesses. Quite often this guess is wrong and the solver fails. This means while the solver can successfully clear quite a lot of the grid, it very rarely fully solves the whole grid. Fortunately, there is more logic we can use to get a higher success rate when trying to solve Minesweeper. In this second example, if we look at the number two highlighted here, we already know where one of the bombs in its surrounding tiles is located from this flag. So we know that the other bomb must be in one of these two tiles. If we then look at the number two next to this, we already know that one of the bombs is in one of those two tiles, which means the second bomb must be in this third tile. We can therefore flag the location of this second bomb and using the number one above, we can then reveal these two further tiles and flag this one. Now this logic is actually quite difficult to translate directly into code. So the solver thinks about it in a slightly different way. The solver first applies a maybe flag to one of the tiles at random. It then acts as though this maybe flag is a real flag and works out which tiles should be revealed. Using this number two, we know that this tile would be revealed if the maybe flag were correct. This tile is then marked as being maybe cleared. If we now look at this second two with the context of the maybe cleared and the maybe flag tile, we can see that this third tile would need to be flagged as well. So we place a second maybe flag on this tile. If we now look at this number one tile, we can see that something's gone wrong because there are two maybe flag tiles when there can only be one bomb. Because the logic has broken down, we know that our original maybe flag was incorrect. Therefore, the first cell that we chose at random is actually clear. If we clear this tile, we can now use the number two above to flag both of the other tiles. If we then reveal this final tile using the number one, we're back to where we were using the previous logic. And with that implemented, the solver works pretty well. And it might just be me, but I do find I can watch this for quite a long time and it does satisfy that part of my brain. It's also fully customizable for different shapes, uh, different difficulties. You can tweak the speeds around so it solves a bit faster or a bit slower, depending on what you think looks best. Thanks very much for watching this video and I hope you enjoyed it. Please do check out my channel for other random projects that I'm working on. If you have any technical questions about the code, please leave them in the comments. There'll be a link in description to the full code if it's something you want to try out and play around with. Maybe you could improve the visuals, write a more efficient solution algorithm, or just tweak some of the settings to make it more satisfying. I'll leave you now to sit back and watch the solver do its work.